Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will give introduction to signals. This is my first technical video in this video lecture series of signals and system. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of signals. After that, I will explain representation of signals. And at last, I will discuss about applications of signals. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of signals. One should know what is signal. See, signal could be any physical quantity that is varying with respect to time or it could be varying with respect to any independent variable. Let me take one example. If you talk about stock market, then in stock market, index will vary with respect to time. To represent stock market, we use signal. If you take one more example, like temperature with respect to day time, then you can observe data of temperature with respect to day time. Like early in the morning, there will be lower temperature. During day time, there will be rise in temperature. At evening time and during night time, there will be lower temperature. So that could be analyzed using signals. Right. So signals, that is a physical quantity that is varying with respect to time, space or independent variable. Signals are used to convey information in different branches of engineering. So in different branches of engineering, we use signals to convey information. Right. That information could be temperature, it could be pressure, it could be voltage, it could be current in different branches of engineering to represent physical quantity with respect to time or with respect to independent variable, we use signals, right? Let me give few examples. Like if you talk about stock market, then you can analyze stock market by signals with respect to time, right? You might have seen graphs of stock market. Let me give you a few more examples like speech signal. If you observe speech signal, then that is having characteristic like this. As and when we have few words, at that time there will be vibration like this. So here we have signal of speech signal that you can observe, right? Here if you observe the heart rate signal, then that is appearing somewhat like this. So as and when there is a heart beats, at that time you will be observing a characteristic of spike which is there with this signal, right? So to represent any physical quantity, we use signals, right? Now I'll discuss about representation of signals. So in general, there are four ways by which we can represent the signal. See, first way is to have a representation by function. So if you observe here, I have considered one function x of n, that is n plus one divided by two, where n value that is starting from zero and it is going up to five. So if you talk about this function, then at n is equals to zero, value of this function is half. At n is equals to one, value is one plus one by two means it will be one. At n is equals to two, it will be three by two. Likewise, by functional representation, we can represent signal. If you talk about same function, with graphical representation, then it will be appearing like this. Here I have explained discrete signal representation, where if you observe n is equals to zero, at that time value is half. At n is equals to one, it is two by two means one. At n is equals to two, it is three by two means 1.5. At n is equals to three, it is four by two means two. So that is how we can represent this function in graphical form as well. If you talk about third way of representation, then that is tabular representation. You can observe in tabular representation with respect to n is equals to data. I have written magnitude of the function, right? So at n is equals to zero, it is 0.5. At one, it is one. At two, it is 1.5. Likewise, in tabular representation also, we can represent signals. See, fourth way is 
sequence representation. In sequence representation, what we do is in curly bracket, we note down the values of function and reference is indicated by arrow. So here reference is there at n is equals to 0 where arrow is shown, right? So in general, there are four ways by which we can represent signal, right? Functional representation, graphical representation, tabular representation and sequence representation. Now I'll discuss about applications of signals. See, there are many applications in different branches of engineering. We use signals to represent any physical quantity. If you talk about first application, then that is widely used in control systems. In control systems, we use signals to transfer the information. Like you can observe here we have input signal that is given to this system. And here we have error signal that we give it to controller. Controller is generating controlled signal and that is given to plant. Here we have output signal that is taken over here as a feedback. And here we have a feedback signal, right? So different signals are there that is getting processed inside system, right? If you talk about second application, then that is communication systems. See in communication systems, we use signals to communicate in between two devices. You can observe here we have satellite. Satellite is communicating with tower. So here there is a communication at high frequency signals, right? Here this satellite that is communicating with disk antenna. This satellite that is also communicating with car to have a GPS signal. If you observe this surrounding, then in this surrounding we have routers, PC, cell phones. They are communicating via signals. So here we are using signal to transfer information. Those information could be there in digital form or it could be there in analog form, right? Now I'll talk about last application that is there in signal processing. See in signal processing, widely we use signal. Like you can observe here we have a sensor. Sensor will be sensing any physical entity and that will be given to low pass filter. Low pass filter that is used to eliminate high frequency noise. So after that whatever signal is there, that we give it to analog to digital converter. So here we will be having digital data that we give it to digital signal processor. And after processing, we have digital data over here that we give it to digital to analog converter. And then we have analog signal over here. Again, we use low pass filter to eliminate high frequency noise. And then that signal that we give it to actuator. So here we have a complete block of digital signal processing. So in signal processing, we use signals, right? Likewise, there are many other applications as well. Here I have only listed three applications. This is just to give you idea about what is signal. Signal is physical quantity that is varying with respect to time or it could be varying with respect to any independent variable. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you so much for watching this video.